The Honorable Member, Dr. Vishwa Mahaji. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I go into my substantive presentation, first of all, I'd like to uh, rebut or refer to some of the things that were said by some of my friends from the opposite side. Mr. Speaker, if, uh, if you're saying that you had, uh, they had free education in their manifesto, simple question, why did they raise the monies, the fees to UG? I'll deal with the staffing for hospitals in a bit, Mr. Speaker. And um, the other thing is that Mr. Speaker, before we decide on what goes into the budget, I don't know how the other members do it across the floor, but we walk the village. We go house to house. We talk to people. We engage them. And one of the major complaints from the village is roads. So, Mr. Speaker, that is why the budget reflects what the people want. And I'd now like to deal with a, with a few points my... Uh, Friend, Honorable Member Mai Paul raised about the. Uh, I was upset, Mr. Speaker, just like you, when you referred to two of my colleagues, MPs and medical doctors, Dr. Westford and Dr. Berry. I could say safely that they are on the ground. They meet with people. They deal with them as politicians and as professionals, Mr. Speaker. About Region 4, um, not have Region 4 and 7 not having proper investments from the uh, government. Mr. Speaker, one of the good things about one of the good things about internet and WhatsApp is that people hear and they respond right away. Region 7 RHO sent me that one. They they have a data in Kamrang that within a week or so will start doing surgeries. Bartika is going to have a new hospital. May, Mr. Speaker, the specialist outreaches to villages and community meetings. $300 million from Ministry of Health to renovate, to develop, to provide better services in every single healthcare facility in Region 7. $562 million in capital from the RDC budget in Region 7, six boat and engines, three ambulances, eight ATV, ATVs, and four motorcycles, among other things, for Region 7. Region 4, the RHO sent $300 million from the Ministry of Health for all facilities to be re rehabilitated. Diamond Hospital has been started, the new hospital. They are now doing surgeries at the current Diamond Hospital again. New facilities at Swan on the highway and other places. New hospital is being constructed, like I said, at Diamond. Not mentioning the pediatric and maternal hospital right in Region 4. Festival City has been upgraded. And $240 million for new medical equipment in the health centers of Region 4. So, Mr. Speaker, I would encourage my friends to fact check before they come with these things. Mr. Speaker, I stand here and proudly say I support this budget wholeheartedly. In saying that, let me take this opportunity to thank all those who have contributed to this budget. From the man in the street, to the NDCs, the RDCs, the municipalities, the ministries, and especially the staff of the Ministry of Finance, and the Honorable Minister himself. Job well done. Mr. Speaker, this budget is deemed stay in the course, building prosperity for all. And this is what the budget is. It continues building on the foundation laid by other people's progressive party civic governments and other party people's progressive party civic budget. You see, Mr. Speaker, we have a vision and a plan to achieve that vision. The PVPC is not like the PNC APNO AFC who sold pipe dreams to the population in 2011 and again in 2015 and made promises that they never fulfilled which led to their government's demise. Mr. Speaker, for emphasis, I'd like to quote, to reuse the quote that uh, Honorable uh, Minister Anand said, but in a different way, quoting from Chuck Norris, the famous actor. Quote, 
As the adage goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It's time for patriots everywhere to rally together again and take back the country, unquote. The people of Guyana fooled twice in 2011 and 2015 by the APNO AFC. Then in 2020, the people rallied together and took back the country. Now we have a people's government working in the best interest of the people. You seem to be having a lot of bright ideas when you're in opposition. Stay there. Mr. Speaker, I am the geographic MP of Region 6. The leadership of the RDC 6 continued to do their good work over 2023. They did a lot of meetings, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the regional chairman, the vice chairman, the administrative staff. They had over 600 community meetings across the length and breadth of Region 6, from Sipuruta, Oriala, down to Mara, include Blackbush, Pola, Barakara, and in the Kanji area. Mr. Speaker, consultations across the board. At these meetings, persons given the opportunity to hear their concerns, ask questions, and make suggestions. Based on these suggestions, the RDC management and administration is guided on the way forward. In fact, Mr. Speaker, that is how this year's budget, like other people's progressive party civic budgets, was crafted. In addition, ministers are seen in the region, and they are readily available to persons every single week, particularly over weekends. On any given weekend, you would have two or three ministers in the region walking the ground, meeting the people, talking with them, communicating with them, and being in direct contact with the people we serve. Mr. Speaker, the Vice President visited Region 6 and a number of times over the last year, holding about 20 community meetings. Additionally, His Excellency, President Dr. Irfan Ali visited Region 6 at least six times, conducted 26 community meetings like he would have done across the country. He would have presidential outreaches across Region 6 like in other regions. At these outreaches, pending matters are resolved. Suggestions are made on the way forward. Concerns are raised. And Mr. Speaker, like previous People's Progressive Party civic presidents, this president is available to anyone and everyone. Whether it be to lend an ear, shake a hand, give a hug, or take out a picture in real life, Mr. Speaker. As is our Vice President, our Ministers and Leaders of the People's Progressive Party Civic. Mr. Speaker, this is how one should lead. One should lead by listening to the people, being with the people, obeying the will of the people. Our leaders are men and women of the people, are with the people, and for the people. Mr. Speaker, if we look at education briefly in Region 6, for 2023, maintenance was $25 plus million. 2024, $27 plus million. The Because We Care cash grant in 2023, $906 plus million. In 2024, because we, because we Care cash grant has been increased to over $1 billion. The National School Grant, $94 million plus in 2023. 2024, 287 million plus. Mr. Speaker, school grants are being done termly instead of in the last term of the year and allows the school to determine the needs on an individual basis each school. Because we care cash grant increased from 35 to 40,000 per child. Continuous maintenance and upgrading of all schools are done and the commencement of construction of the Oriala Secondary School has started. That is sharing the money alike so that people in the hinterland could also get benefits. Mr. Speaker, health. In Region 6, there are significant improvements. Additional specialists, including some super specialists like nephrologists, urologists, gastroenterologists. Surgical department done surgeries using lap laparoscopic techniques. Techniques that lowers the loss of blood, less pain, faster recuperation time, and so, Mr. Speaker, this is why in this year's budget, we have budgeted for another complete laparoscopic suite for New Amsterdam Hospital. Benefit like other regions, in an upgrade in x-rays, Mr. Speaker, there is now a digital x-ray in New Amsterdam, Port Moran, and Maibikuri. So the people in Maibikuri, Mr. Speaker, who haven't had that facility for a long time, we can now get their x-rays done right there. And the digital x-ray, Mr. Speaker, you could have it on your phone, they could take it out in my Curie, and we could consult with persons in New Amsterdam, in Georgetown, or even overseas. We are moving forward, Mr. Speaker. Every single health 
facility in Region 6 was either repaired, upgraded, and now has better accommodation and facilities for patients and staff. Specialist outreaches to the different riverine communities and hinterland communities of Oriala, Siparut, and Barakara are done on a routine basis. Mr. Speaker, there is no backlog of surgical cases in Region 6. As an, as, on an average, the availability of medication and medical supplies to Region 6, like the rest of the country, Mr. Speaker, is in the high 80s and 90%. Mr. Speaker, I know that because every morning we have a meeting with all the hospitals across the country. Mr. Speaker, the blood bank in Region 6 collected the largest amount of blood in its history, 2,601, thanks to the hardworking staff and the giving nature of the residents. At this time, Mr. Speaker, I want to remind this House about services that were once provided pre-2015 in Region 6, but stopped immediately after we lost the elections, after the People's Progressive Party lost the government, or sometime shortly after. I'd like, to men I'd like to mention, Mr. Speaker, the geriatric care program and the home-based care program, which was stopped immediately after we lost war. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, another travesty, while we were offering services to the special needs school of New Amsterdam, a doctor used to go once per month. The rehab staff used to go once per week to deal with these students, to help them. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? Immediately after APNU AFC took over, that stopped. We have restarted it, Mr. Speaker. And I can tell you, quoting Dr. Henry, who led the last team there, quote, I had the pleasure of restarting offering services to the special needs school. The team of medical physicians and rehab services and dental staff saw 51 students, four teachers, one parent. The team and I felt great satisfaction or blessed with the smiles of the children. This Unquote. These smiles were taken away by the Apple OFC, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, National Ophthalmology Hospital that was literally non-functional between 2015 and 2020 has started doing back cataracts in 2021, February. We had to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to get it back up to scratch. Last year, performed 1,127 major surgeries and 546 minor surgeries. Mr. Speaker, in most regions in Guyana, there is no backlog anymore of cataracts. We are now, currently as I'm speaking, we have staff in the interland, in Region 7 and in Region 8. We are searching for patients who have cataracts. And you know what we'll do, Mr. Speaker, just like we did for Region 1 and Region 9. We are going to identify them, screen them right there, fly them out, take them to Port Moron, get them operated successfully, and take them back in there, and then we send the specialists to do the final check in their own region. Mr. Speaker, that is taking care to the people, and that is equity. Mr. Speaker, more good news. At 75 Village, we are building a brand new hospital, a hospital that's going to provide care like never before in that area. In New Amsterdam, we are going to build a level five hospital, where we are going to have super specialists. We are going to have a cat lab in the new hospital to deal with patients who have heart conditions. We are going to have MRI and CT services. New Amsterdam will be one of two facilities in the government system that would have MRI. Mr. Speaker, and people are still saying here that we are spending too much money on infrastructure. Come on. Mr. Speaker, Region 6 is known as the agriculture region. Rice production moved from 249,547 metric tons of paddy in 2019 to 330,899 metric tons in 2023 to give a rice equivalent of 162,206 metric tons in 2019 and now last year 215,084 metric tons. Mr. Speaker, Ministry of Agriculture spent over 25 billion over the last three years rehabilitating the water shrimp project, the black water, brackish water shrimp, sorry, flood relief, fertilizer assistance, rehabilitation of drying floor, construction of model farm and shade houses, expansion of the pineapple project in Oriala Sipruta and Barakar cultivation expansion, <coughs> procurement of equipment, retrofitting of processing facilities, construction of solar dryer bar Barakar. Genetic improvement, Mr. Speaker, of cattle, sheep, and pigs. Honey production, clean milk project, TB eradication program in cattle, Mr. Speaker. That is the direction in which we are going. Forward ever. Mr. Speaker, part-time Before workers. you go forward, you need five minutes. 
Please, you, sir, could I ask respectfully for five minutes for the Honorable Member to conclude his speech? Thank you very much, Honorable Member. You may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Within five minutes. Please allow me to tell you the story of a young lady, 35 year old, a single parent with two children who left school when she was in fourth form. Obviously, didn't write CXE. Always dreamed of being a nurse. This dream was shattered when she did not complete school. Mr. Speaker, she took whatever job she could, cleaning homes, cleaning yards, helping people to get money to send her children to school. And what did the APNO AFC do? They took away the $20,000 that she would have gotten as a grant for her two children going to school. Mr. Speaker, she has gotten it back. Now, Mr. Speaker, in addition to that, she has gotten a part-time job, $40,000, and she has said that she has applied for a low-income house and that from the 40000 she'll be able to pay her mortgage and still get some monies left back to supplement what she's earning elsewhere. Mr. Speaker, she has applied for and gotten into one of the gold programs, so she's upgrading herself. Once she successfully completes that, the equivalent of, of a CXE, Mr. Speaker, she is guaranteed that she's going to get into the nursing program. Because the Honorable Minister has been saying that once you have the qualifications, we have a space for you, Mr. Speaker. We are not building hospitals just like that. We have increased the number of nurses that we are training from just a couple hundred to over 2,000 per year, Mr. Speaker. That is what we have done, a visionary government. And once, once they are completed, they have successfully completed their program, a job is guaranteed for them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> let me just share some other, uh, the gold program, I just mentioned the gold program, Region 6, 2,239 persons would have benefited so far from the gold program, Mr. Speaker. And if the gold program didn't exist, this 2,239 residents of Region 6 would not have gotten any program, anything to do and upgrade themselves. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to share the thoughts and views of two pensioners. One, Mr. Forbes Moore, a former candidate of the People's National Congress. I quote, I am a pensioner. During the PNC's term in office, I was receiving 20,500 monthly, which in real terms was less in value, lesser in value, due to the heavy taxation and bad that the APNU AFC added on essential food and other items, along with the wicked and spiteful removal of free potable water by the incompetent and considerate PNC AFC government. With the recent increase in my pension announced in budget 2024, I'm now receiving 36,000, which in real terms has a higher value, taking into consideration that I no longer have to pay for potable water. Monies are there for me to do eye screening at the doctor of my choice and $15,000 to purchase new glasses, adding tangibly to my resources, thanks to the caring government. Also because of the free gold scholarship, this is a pension, Mr. Speaker, that has no age limit, this government has made it available. I am considering applying for one which will help me to fulfill my lifelong desire to enter the world of journalism. One love, one Guyana. Guyana is in good hands. I close quote there, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to quote another poor pension, and this is more relevant to today's debate. <clears throat> Miss, 92 years old, Mr. Inshinali from Reliance Kanji. His take on the budget, and I quote, I sat and listened to the whole speech of Dr. Ashni. It was a very good budget. Pensioners benefit. All young people benefit. Please tell Dr. Ashing thanks. And thanks to the PEP government. But you know, Doc, you got some hard mouthed people who, no matter what the PEP government do for them, they will find fault. They're just hard mouth. But I'll you continue the good work. Next year, I will once again go and vote for the People's Progressive Party. Close quote. His daughter in law, who owns a small business, says she cannot wait for the gas to shore pipeline to land for her to get benefits. Mr. Speaker, the PEPC has a reputation of fulfilling its promises, staying true to the course. Our president continues to lead from the front by the wisdom, and guided back by the wisdom and experience and brilliance of our general secretary and vice president, supported by the veteran warriors like Comrade Gale, the prime minister and a hardworking cabinet. Exciting times are ahead, Mr. Speaker. The pace of development will only get faster and more intense. <clears throat> In closing, Mr. Speaker, as the Director General of the Ministry of Health, I'd just like to highlight one, of, one other thing, and that is that Region 9 never had surgical capacity, Mrs. Speaker. Region 8, sorry, never had surgical capacity. But, Mr. Speaker, last year, we not only 
constructed a theater and equipped it. We equipped the lab and we did the first set of surgeries ever to be done in Region, major surgeries ever to be done in Region 8. And Mr. Speaker, that was done by a team headed by Mr. Amir from GPAC. But you know what, Mr. Speaker, within the first quarter of this year, we are sending in their local team of specialists to be based in Madia for the people of Region 8. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to say I support this, this thing, this budget, Mr. Speaker. And the five years of the APA, AFC, Mr. Speaker, was like a pothole on the road to Guyana's development and growth. We are now on a trajectory that successive PUP civic governments will take Guyana way into the future with visionary, brilliant, committed leadership. Guyana belongs to all of us. One Guyana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable.